We want to start out with our overhand series of knots that we use in rescue. The first would be a single overhand knot. The rope simply passes over itself and through the loop and you have a single overhand knot. Very common, you've seen that in a lot of places. A double overhand knot then would be passing the rope over the other piece twice and through the loop and this would be a double overhand knot. There's also a triple overhand knot. We would use a single and a double overhand knot usually at the end of another knot to act as a stopper or a safety knot. We also can use this knot to attach two different ropes together. When you attach two ropes it's called a bend and to make a double overhand bend we merely tie a double overhand on this side of the rope and then on the second rope we also tie a double overhand knot and when you pull those together you've created a double overhand bend. This is a great knot for attaching two ropes together. Now you also can use the overhand knot on webbing or tape. Single overhand basically ties through and then you keep the knot in its flat formation when you're working it on webbing. We can use this to attach two pieces of webbing together in what we call an overhand follow through where this end of the webbing follows the other path around the knot and then out. We snug that up or dress the knot by making it even and neat and there we have an overhand bend on webbing. Now when we make a knot or a bend we want the tails to be at least the width of our four fingers and keep an eye on those that they don't pull back through the knot and release it. Next we want to look at our figure eight series of knots and they're named that because when you make them they look kind of like an eight. The rope goes over and then under itself see that eight shape and then through the loop and pulled through. So there we would have a single figure eight. Now another way we use the figure eight and probably more commonly in rescue is that we make a bite on the rope and then we use that bite to create the figure eight going over, under, and then through the loop. We dress or snug the knot down and there we have a figure eight on a bite. You notice we have this tail up here. We talked before about using a single overhand as a stopper or keeper knot. You can tie that single overhand there, snug it down close, and now we have a figure eight on a bite with a safety or keeper knot on it. Now another way we use the figure eight knot is to join two ropes together. Remember we call that a bend. Figure eight bend is simply made by creating a figure eight knot through the loop and then taking another rope and following through that figure eight the other direction. Now it looks like there's a nice opening here to go into the knot. But if you move it over and start it here, it actually will make the knot a little easier to tie and make it neater. So we just pass that around and through, snug the knot down, dress it so that it's nice and neat, and there we have a figure eight bend joining two ropes together. It's also called a Flemish bend, and you'll notice the tails stick out of opposite sides. So that's indicative of that. The last figure eight knot we're gonna look at is the figure eight follow through. It's very similar to the figure eight bend except it's tied on one rope. We start with a figure eight and then this end would be passed around or through something like your harness for climbing and then would come back through the first figure eight just like the follow through did. So we would follow that around through and out Dress that knot. 
as you can see when we're finished, it is just a figure eight on a bite. However, this loop would then be going around or through some other object. Again, we want to have four fingers on the tail and tie a safety knot on that with a single overhand loop. The next three knots we want to look at are a little unique. The first one is the bowline. And bowline is a very common knot in climbing, but it's not used as much nowadays. People tend to use the figure eights more. But it's really just three loops coming together. You start with a loop on top, then you bend around a loop like this, and then you come up through that hole around the rope and create this third loop. Notice all the loops are rotating the same direction, and then you snug that down. There's the bowline knot, and it creates that loop that could go around a tree. And then the tail on this needs to be finished with a single or double overhand knot to keep it from pulling back up through the bowline. So that's a bowline. There's a variation of the bowline, which is referred to as a double bowline or a high strength bowline. And the only difference here is that you start with two loops at the beginning. So there's your double, or that provides the high strength. Make another loop, back up through the hole, around the rope, down through the hole, and pull that tight and dress the knot. And that would be the double or high strength bowline. And remember, there needs to be enough left here to tie your stopper or safety knot. The next unique knot that we tie is called a midline knot, and it's made to create a loop in the middle of another or of a rope. And the one we use is the butterfly knot. Now there's lots of different ways to tie this. If you know a way, use the way you know. But otherwise, let me show you the easy way I know. You lay your hand out like this, put the rope across, then you come around once and you work backwards towards your thumb. And you do that a second time. So you have three strands working from your fingers to your thumb. Now you take the middle strand, pull it out a little bit, and then feed it under and through. When you pull that down and then pull the ends out, dress the knot, this is a butterfly. This is where you can attach in the middle of the line. You can identify this because you can see these two ropes crossing right here, and on the back side they're parallel. So that's a butterfly knot used to give you a loop in the middle of your rope or line. And the last unique knot is another variation, and it's called a sheet bend. And so knowing that it's a bend, you know it ties two ends of rope together or two ropes together. And it starts with a simple loop or a bite. You have that bite. Notice the tail is on that end, the working end. And now, coming up from that same side, Take our second rope, come up through the hole and around like we did the bowline. But now instead of going back through, we go between this rope and the bite. So if you can see how instead of going down through the line, it's going across here. And when you snug that down, this rope bites on to this bite. Now this is especially good if you're using a smaller and a larger rope. This one would be the smaller rope, the bite would be on the larger rope, and that smaller rope would then cinch down firmly on here. You have two tails, both of those need to be tied off with overhand knots to keep them in place so that they can't travel back through. Put them all close together, and that would be your sheet bend with overhand knots as safety knots on the end. Now there is a variation also of this knot and it's called the double sheet bend or high strength sheet bend. And knowing that with the bowline that just meant you went twice, it's the same thing here. Create the bite. And now you go up and around and through, but now we go around and through one more time. So there's our double. We cinch that down. And again, we want to tie off with an overhand or a double overhand knot for the tails. 
So there is a double or high strength sheet bend used to attach two ropes together. The nice use of this knot is if you're creating an anchor and you need to get your loop a certain size, it's very easy to adjust this knot to the size you want it by just pulling in your extra rope until you get to the length you need it to be and then putting that through and you've got. We now want to look at a couple of hitches. Remember a hitch is tied onto something else like an object or another rope and without that other object the hitch does not exist. So the first one we want to look at is a clove hitch which is a great way to tie in quickly to a carabiner or to tie to a pole or a tree and it's made by making two loops this one goes across the top and then a second one the same way going across the top. So there's the two loops and then we just put the second loop behind the first one and clip that into our carabiner and pull it tight. So you can see that that snugs down similar to the way the sheet bend attached and it attaches for pulls on both ends of the rope. So great not to attach in temporarily to a, an anchor or to feed ropes in and keep them connected. Now, as I said, hitch only exists with the object there. So once this slides off, there really is no knot there. The second hitch is made virtually the same, except for the last step, and it's called a munter hitch. And the munter hitch basically starts with the two loops, that one on top, this one on top again, so our two loops. And now instead of putting it behind, we close them together like a book and we clip into our carabiner. And now what we've created is a belay knot. As this rope travels around, it applies pressure to this rope. And so you can control the movement of this rope by the friction of this piece here. And it can work both ways. The load could be at this end and I could be controlling it here or if you pull on this side, it flips through, and now this rope can be taking the load controlled by this end. So that's a munter hitch, and we use that as a belay knot. Um, we do not use that as a belay knot for a rescue load, but for an individual load and for a short term, that's fine. So those are those two hitches. Last hitch we want to look at is called a Prusik hitch, and it's a friction knot to allow us to attach to another rope. And remember, we said that if we tied a double overhand bend on the same rope, we created a loop, and this is called a Prusik loop. And we make the Prusik knot by passing it over the other rope and then back through the opening. Now, this would be a single. We then pass it through a second time for a double, which is how we'd use it for personal use. And for rescue use, we pass through a third time and make a triple. As we pull it, we rotate the rope a little so that the knot ends up on the side of the loop. And then we need to dress the knot so that it works in from the outside to the inside on both edges of the knot. It takes a little bit of time to get that perfect. Then we snug it up. And as you can see there, that would be your Prusik. This is a triple Prusik hitch. And when we pull that, it locks against the rope in either direction and allows us to grab hold of that rope.